This is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and I wanted to do a video on our natural orchard floor management system. We just got our biodynamic certi certificate for, I guess, till next year. So we're still biodynamic certified. Thank God, I love being biodynamic certified. Their standards are so high and the people are so nice that um, I strongly believe in it. And it's a set of uh, uh, procedures, biological procedures they have, and then it is the unknown. So, for tropical fruit growing here in Florida, I think pretty much the unknown is just nature. Um, how nature can grow tropical fruit trees. It's kind of completely disregarded and it's the only way to find discoveries is through nature for growing tropical fruit trees. And why aren't we studying the natural orchard floor for growing all your tropical fruit trees? I know some of you have discovered this just like I have. And for us, our path to this discovery of what grows by itself is what's needed to grow your tropical fruit trees. Was for our, for us, it was soil health. We manage for soil health. And the only way I could figure out the what I think is the most important rule is to not disturb the soil was to not disturb it. That means stay off of it and um, observe it. And through this observation, after, and we, we apply compost, compost, prop, compost is the single most important thing you can do for your tropical fruit trees unless you have like raw biodynamically grown zebu manure grass-fed beef basically manure not any manure and that has been not any beef that's been given grains and stuff because that none of that is you know None of that is organic. It's not natural. It, the hardest thing to that people to understand is this: all the weeds. It was just simpler to remove everything and just put what you deemed sufficient where nature once was and call it superior and never study what nature did, would do. If you're managing for soil health, it's kind of the number one rule, I think. It's because it takes care of so many of the soil health uh, rules for growing tropical fruit trees. Now, if you have a lot of uh, big plants already that are like this, you're gonna have to manage them for height, whether it's grass or heliconia or other trees. That's just part of the program. But the orchard floor, what grows in it, I, um, we have uh, two and a half acres on the Indian River Lagoon, and we've had it for 10 years, long enough to observe 
massive degradation of the Indian River Lagoon firsthand. And um, everyone has mowed lawn and everyone has a different set of chemicals that they apply. And when it rains, everyone's yards are rivers and it flows right into the <laughs> lagoon. Ours is the only place that's managed for soil health and we don't have any runoff. We implemented the living cover last year and applied compost for the first time there. I planted tropical fruit th trees there 10 years ago and walked away. The first year we let the cover grow out and applied compost the trees just exploded and we got fruit, lots of fruit for the first time. So this, um, this, the, what, what grows by itself in Florida turns out is a dynamic group of plants, diverse set of plants that pretty much changes. It's perennial and it's annual and it's herbal and it's woody and it's grassy. It's everything here and we didn't plant any of it. So it's like, I can only see little bits of the lawn left. This was a lawn for 50 years and it was killing the, the big trees. The problem with the natural and people don't, it hasn't been studied and it, people thinks, think it's because it's the unknown. What if that plant kills my, kills my tree? The soil's so bad here in Florida because there's just not enough nutrients to go around, they say. the diversity in your cover will give your trees the diversity of nutrients they need. It's been my experience. We grow pretty much everything. Sure, I could have like a team, an army of people doing this, but this 10 acres is my yard and I'm the sole worker here. And I kind of like it like that. We probably will never become a huge giant tropical fruit farm just because I and my partner, when they retire in three years at what, 70, <laughs> um, we'll be the only employees pretty much. I just don't really see the need to, like, ruin it. It's so nice like this. It's like, it's just, it's amazing how all this, like, grows your fruit. That with a little manure, that's how it is for us. Biodynamic compost. So the other, um, uh, the other known practices that everyone does here in Florida is, one is they mow the lawn and do rings of wood chips, I believe, around the trees. They don't put it right up against the tree, but they do that and the lawn, I haven't ever seen anybody use a push mower here in Florida and any type of push mower. So they all drive on tractors. So the lawn just allows water to run right off and compact the soil even more. And this is known practice. They, this is they know that it does this, but yet 
they rather turn me into a like a horrible person. I mean, some of the YouTube comments, t I've never been made fun of for my age, but um, <laughs> that's kind of what they do. They turn it on me and it's not about me. It's about the natural world and restoring its status to grow your fruit trees to completely disregard every, everyone and everything else just to grow your fruit trees kind of isn't how the biological system works. And we know all this stuff. And I really don't understand what it's going to take if they're going to have to enforce the non-mowing onto the lawn people in order to make them help our water, our lagoon, Probably they've implemented it on the sand dunes. So what applies to the sand dunes also applies to your yard. Stay off of it and don't cut it. It's just common sense. And how you can turn this into, we get, you know, I know it's not just, the people that watch this understand. I, I know that. If I know you, you're out there and I'm trying to cultivate more of you, us. So, um, but to I mean, they know it causes this, so the government maybe needs to step in and make it like the sand dunes, make all our soil in Florida along the coast and waterways like the sand dunes, and tell people to stay off of it and not to mow it. Oh, you can't tell me what to do. <laughs> Well, we're destroying Florida and it's really gets me depressed and it gets me depressed. It's turned me off a of tropical fruit, to be honest with you. And I have a hard time getting excited about my tropical fruit anymore because of the complete denial and destruction of Florida that they uh, embrace here. So... I know that's not all of them, but it's a big majority of them. It's some that are disguised as permaculture people. If you clear everything from an area of land and then you plant, you like clear, like completely clear it, like because you say the trees and everything are not uh, healthy or whatever, but you scrape it all out and then you plant your tropical fruit forest in that. You cannot certify that biodynamic or organic because it's clear cutting. It's discouraged. And to package that as tr permaculture is sad for permaculture because I know permaculture is so much more because I've watched enough of the Australians in action and I know that it's a good thing. But um, Florida, for some reason, they act like it's different. They want to like completely colonize every square inch of it and it's because that's how the testing is done people don't uh, people don't bother to look at large multi-species tropical fruit trees growing on their own in a wild system they just would rather say it doesn't work anyway just get kind of depressed when I see like water running off into the lagoon and I know that I've seen you spraying your glyphosate and I know you throw water soluble chemicals into your pots and some of you learn that from the nurseries and then do that in the ground here so anyway this is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm I hope you have a good day natural orchard floor management for soil health tropical fruit trees